at 31, let's take a look at our last topic in this section. We're going to go over even and odd functions. So here are the definitions. A function f is an even function if you plug negative x in for your function and you get the original function back out. So if you perform f of negative x and you get back your original function, we're going to say that f is even. And we'd see that graphically by the graph being symmetric to the y-axis. Now a function f is odd when you plug in f of negative x and you get the opposite of your original function for all of the x's in your domain and its graph would be symmetric with respect to the origin. So in both of these cases we're going to plug in f of negative x and we're going to see what pops back out. If your original function pops back out we're going to call your function even. If the opposite of your original function pops back out we'll call it odd. And most of the time, most functions are neither even nor odd. So you have three options. You're either even, odd, or neither. And I'm going to tell you most of the time it's neither. All right, now, just so you have a graphical idea of what's happening here, let me scoot this up. All right, so there's three types of symmetry we can talk about. You can be symmetric with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, or both. Or we would say the origin. So for this example, you can see that you're symmetric with respect to the x-axis because if I was to draw in the x-axis, you can see it cuts this graph exactly in half. And you can replace y with negative y because if this is xy, this is x negative y, and they're both on the graph. Okay, here I'm symmetric with respect to the x-axis because you can see here that the y-axis, oh gosh, I think I said that wrong. I'm, I'm symmetric with respect to the y-axis because the y-axis cuts this graph in half. And algebraically, if your equation is unchanged when you replace x with negative x, all right, then you're gonna have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And you can see whether you have xy or negative xy, regardless of which side of the y-axis you're on, you're at the same height. Now, if you can do both of those, if you can replace x with negative x and y with negative y and your equation is unchanged, then you're gonna be symmetric with respect to the origin. All right, so we're gonna focus on being symmetric with respect to the y-axis. All right, this is gonna be an even function. And with respect to both, with respect to the origin, it's gonna be your odd. All right, we won't so much, we don't have a name for this version. I mean, it exists, but it doesn't have its own vocab term. Okay, so whenever you wanna check if a function is even, odd, or neither, I'm gonna scooch back down just real quick so we can see the algebra behind it. Here you go. You always do f of negative x and see what pops back out. So notice these both have f of negative x. If you get the original function, even. The opposite of your original function, odd. So I'm always gonna start with f of negative x and see what, where that takes me. All right, so let's scroll to example seven. And I wanna give myself some room to work. So here we go. It says determine whether each function defined is even, odd, or neither. All right, so for all of these, I'm gonna put a negative x into this function and see what pops back out. So let's try g of negative x. All right, I'm also gonna try h of negative x and k of negative x, and we're just gonna see what happens. So this will be negative x to the fifth plus two times negative x cubed minus three times negative x. All right, and let's simplify that a little bit. I'm gonna put a separator here. All right, so this will give me, when I do negative x to the fifth, that will then be negative x to the fifth, right? So negative x quantity to the fifth. Well, the negative survives, it's x to the fifth. Because this is an odd power, this will become minus 2x cubed, and this will become plus 3x. All right, and one thing to notice is that this function, it has the same degree, right? x to the fifth, 2x cubed, 3x but opposite signs, right? This went negative, negative, positive, and this was positive, positive, negative. So this, if I took a negative out, I would have my original function. If I factored out that negative, my original function pops back out. And when we can say we get the opposite of our original function, then we say our function is odd, okay? So I wanna say it again. When you're trying to determine whether functions are even, odd, or neither, you will always plug negative x in for your function 
and see what pops out. If the opposite of your original function pops back out, your, your function is odd. And it didn't happen in this case, but if my original function itself had popped back out, then this would have been even. And if neither of those things happened, then the answer would have been neither. And most of the time, most functions are neither even nor odd. And one giveaway, if you see all the powers on this, or all the exponents, there's an unsaid one here, when all the exponents of your polynomial are odd, you also have an odd function. All right, so let's see what's happening over with h of x. Again, the test is always plug in h of negative x and see what comes back out. So this is going to be 2 times negative x squared minus 3. And I'm going to put a little separator. Okay. So let's see what we have going on here. This is going to be 2. Now negative x squared is x squared. This is minus 3. And I think you'll see that when I plug negative x back in, I got my original function back out. Right? When you plug in negative x and you get your original function out, that meets the definition of this function being even. Okay, so we're seeing one of each case. I plugged in, oops, I shifted that a little bit, excuse me. I plugged in negative x to both of these. I got the opposite of my original function, odd. I got exactly my original function, even. And you can almost guess what's gonna happen in part C. But one thing I wanna point out is if you look at all the exponents here, right? I had an even exponent. And even though there's no x variable here, you could kind of technically say you had x to the zero because anything raised to the zero is one. So you had even exponents here. And whenever you have functions or polynomials where all of the exponents are even, you're gonna have an even function. And just like over here, all of the exponents were odd, I had an odd function. All right, so let's take a look at part C. We're gonna test it with k of negative x. So this will be negative x squared plus six times negative x plus nine. When I simplify this a little bit, I get x squared minus six x plus nine. Okay, so let's see if it's even or odd. If it was even, I'd have to get my original function back out. And, and you can see here, x squared minus six x plus nine is not the same as x squared plus six x plus nine. The signs are off. So right away I can see it is not even. Right, if it was odd, it would have to be the opposite, right, a negative of my original function. So let's test it out. Let's factor out a negative. Oops. If I factor out a negative, I'm going to be left with negative x squared plus 6x minus 9. All right, is the stuff in my parentheses my original function? And I think you can see it's not, right? This was x squared, this is a negative x squared. This is positive 9, this is negative 9. So this is not odd as well. It didn't meet either of the definitions, so k of x is neither. And because these were polynomials, again, I can see there's a problem. Do you see how you have an even exponent here and an odd exponent here? They were, they were mixed, right? So that's why this function is neither even nor odd. It's a neither. Okay, so with that, that, that wraps up section 3.5. So let's just take a look back at what we've accomplished. Right? We've done a bunch of transformations, which was the title of this section. So we've compressed things and stretched things, right? Vertically and horizontally. We've reflected our graphs over the x and y axis, and we've done vertical and horizontal shifts. And the last topic we just picked up was determining whether a function was even, odd, or neither. All right, so that's going to take us through example, not example, excuse me, section 3.5. Next up is section 3.6, where we'll take a look at the graphs of absolute value functions a little bit more closely. All right, thanks so much, gang. I'll see you in a few. Bye.